guys, welcome back to my channel, Mermaid Nina here. Well, I am back with another packing tips videos for Disney World beginners or newbies or first timers or people who just haven't been in a while. If you've seen my previous uh, packing video, I did kind of showcase, um, you know, kind of the normal things to pack, you know, how many t-shirts, how many shorts and things you should consider, you know, weather wise and kind of those basic things, you know, don't forget to pack your swimsuit. But I have some like oddball things, things kind of outside of the box that I also pack as well. In fact, I managed to find 20 <laughs> kind of different items that maybe are outside of your norm, you know, outside of your t-shirts, your swimsuits, your sunscreens, your sunglasses, stuff like that, that I thought I would share with you guys. Um, as you guys know, I recently got back from a trip uh, to Disneyland where I did kind of go with a bunch of other people. And it was funny to me to see the weird things I pack versus kind of the out of the norm things they pack and so I kind of grouped all that stuff together uh, and came up with this list so I might not pack all of these things for every single trip but sometimes they are quite beneficial to t depending on the type of trip you're going to you know are you going for a long stay uh, or do you plan on ordering food and all those kind of things so here you go guys Nina's top 20 oddball outside of the box items you should consider packing when going on vacation, specifically something like Disney World or Disneyland. You guys ready? And of course I do have to mention that I have all sorts of packing videos, right? So I have packing videos for just kids, packing videos for what to pack on the airplane, things for the theme park. I have a, a list of things to pack on, you know, for cruises. I have lots of packing videos, but this is kind of the first time I've done kind of like an oddball uh, list. So come on guys, let's get to it. So the first thing, and I have a whole video on this actually specifically, but I pack medicine. I actually pack a whole travel medicine kit. And when I was on my trip, I noticed a few other people pack certain medicines as well. So I just wanted to showcase that for you because I don't think a lot of people think about this. COVID or not, guys, you could get sick. You know, you could have allergies, hay fever, someone could get a cold, the flu. Don't forget about everyday stuff, you know, like upset stomach, heartburn, indigestion, you know, diarrhea, other kind of things that could happen to you. And you wanna be prepared and just pack everything ahead of time in what I like to call a medical kit. So this is my family's medical kit right here. I pack it for every family vacation. When it's just me, I don't usually pack it, but it's got everything in here that we typically use at home when someone gets sick. You know, we've got Vicks Vapor Rub in here. I've got a thermometer in here, kids medicine, kids Tylenol, kids Advil, adult Advil, adult kind of cold sinus flu stuff. All those kind of things are in this bag, which I do showcase in a medical kit video. But when I don't pack this, I do pack kind of my own little kit when it's just me. I actually pack a little smidget. I've shown it before. And this has the stuff in it that I personally take. You know, it's got some allergy meds in here. I've got some water pills in here because they do have edema. Um, and I have Advil in here. And of course, if I am traveling with a bit of the sniffles or it's allergy season or something like that, I might pack something in addition to that. But it was really shocking to me actually um, at Disneyland when I was going to the resort's uh, gift shop, there were quite a few. I'm talking at least five people in line both times I was in the gift shop shopping for Tylenol and Advil to the point where the shelves were empty. So rather than going into the situation where, oops, someone got sick or oops, someone doesn't feel good. Again, I'm not saying COVID. It could be any form of germ, right? Just be prepared, pack it in advance. That way you have it and you didn't have to overpay for it. And you don't have to worry about shelves being empty. So yeah, the first thing I consider right now is travel meds. And don't forget little like travel size. You can actually go to the travel size section of like Target or your, you know, your regular grocery store. And you can get travel size Advil and travel size Tylenol and travel size Pepto, right? And even when you empty out those containers, you can refill them because they're nice small sizes that you can carry with you in your park bag. So yeah, one of my 
oddball things <laughs> is to pack medicine, medicine of all kinds, because you just don't know what you're gonna get into. Again, Nina, I'm always packing headache and fever medicine, because you just don't know anymore, guys. Next thing on my list is laundry. So obviously you're on vacation, you're gonna create some laundry. So a few of my uh, coworkers, they actually pack pop-up hampers and those of course are on my Amazon link but you know it's like the hot you know the ham I don't have mine right now otherwise I'd show you you know it's collapsible and it's got that breeze breathable mesh and then when you get into the hotel room you pop it up you put it inside your hotel room even just tucked away in the closet that way when the kids are like mom dirty clothes dirty undies whatever what do I do with them put them in the hamper. So absolutely coming up with a way to put that dirty laundry is key. You can go as simple as just, you know, we like to pack a lot of just empty grocery bags that I'll have the kids uh, stuff their dirties in. Or you can pack one of these like kind of mesh bags here with the, you know, with the zip closure here. And you can just kind of put all the dirties in here and then when you get home, either dump it into the wash or just wash the whole dang thing. Completely up to you. But yeah, some place to put that dirty laundry is helpful. Next on my list, and I know I've mentioned it before, and I know some of you think I'm crazy, especially the people I travel with think I'm crazy. I pack pillows. My everyday pillows, that's right. Because to me, when you're on vacation and you're up super early and you're out super late, the last thing I wanna do is struggle with sleeping. And for me, having the pillows that I'm used to helps me so much, especially if you're worried about neck problems or back problems. Being able to sleep on what your body is used to sleeping in can be key, can be helpful. I even do that for my kids, especially when my kids were little. They didn't wanna sleep on these giant pillows because at home they're used to these like kid size pillows. I would just pack their pillows and just make life easier. So I guess that's one of my key tips is to pack what's convenient for you at home that helps you sleep pack it when you're on vacation because the worst thing is trying to go to Disney World with like zero sleep. That absolutely stinks. So yes, Nina packs her actual pillows. I pack two pillows. Yes, I'm crazy, but it helps me sleep. I always have a good night's sleep at Disney World and who knows, maybe that is why. Next on my list, kind of like the pillows, I pack a blanket. And I do this specifically because the temperature controls in the hotel rooms are kind of not good. <laughs> they vary. They're either too hot or too cold or the fan is blowing on you constantly. I feel like each hotel room is completely different. I never can figure out if I want it at 69 or 72 or if the fan's gonna go off and on all night long. So annoying. So yes, Nina packs her fuzzy wuzzy blanket with her every trip. My coworkers make fun of me. I pack it to Disney World, to Disneyland, Disney Cruise Line, everywhere I go, this blanket is going with me. It is actually a Disney blanket. They don't sell it anymore. Um, but it's just like your regular kind of Sherpa on one side, fuzzy wuzzy cotton blanket, easy to throw in the wash. Um, and I just always have that. That way I don't have to worry about if the hotel room's air conditioning is being weird. And I don't have to worry about if I have extra blankets, you know, up, you know, that they provide in the closet. I just pack my own fuzzy wuzzy blanket. Absolutely love it. And I do actually use it most of the time because sometimes I feel like the other people in the room want the temperature a little different than I do. I don't worry. I just pack my blanket and if it's too hot, I just take it off. Easy breezy, right? So yes. Packing a travel blanket, which I do for my kiddos as well, is one of my weird, you know, outside of the box things that we pack. Next thing is not super duper weird, but gum. So if anyone has heard, Disney World, Disneyland, Disney Cruise Line, pick your Disney situation, no gum. You cannot purchase gum on property at all. This is something Walt was very specific about. He did not want gum all over his theme parks. He did not want gum underneath tables and chairs and on rides, I mean, gross, right? But what that means is, is if you're a gum chewer, you gotta bring your own gum. But there's other reasons to think about having gum and that is um, obviously bad breath. 
I like to chew gum when I'm on a ride that makes me a little nervous or I think I'm gonna get a little motion sick, right? So I'm kind of always having gum. And it kind of cracked me up because when I was at Disneyland with my coworkers and we got on Indiana Jones, which is just like Animal Kingdom's dinosaur, right? Everyone was pulling out sticks of gum and we're all like, gum, gum, gum. It was pretty funny. We were all on the, we were all thinking the same thing. If, if, if the ride's a little rocky, maybe we should pack in some gum. So yes, gum. I actually will just pack a giant pack of gum. Keep that in my suitcase. And then I take one of my little smidgets here, which I show all the time, and I fill up with gum. And then I just throw that in my park bag. So I'm only taking about, you know, eight pieces with me throughout the day, but then as needed, I can refill from the giant container. So yes, gum. And I I haven't really noticed breath mints either. They probably do sell them. They might be a little harder to find, but gum, breath mints, you know where I'm going with this. Pack those as well. So next up, and I've talked about this before in other videos, is blister tape or blister band-aids. And you specifically wanna think about this uh, before you get that blister, right? So if you are in a new shoe situation, or you're in a different situation, a different type of shoe situation, or if you're just not used to walking, you know, like eight to 15 miles a day in hot concrete, you may develop a blister. And unfortunately, once you get that blister, it's kind of harder to treat because you already have it on your foot. So you kind of want to be preventative about that blister. So Nina always recommends a blister a band aid brand blister band-aids they have a bunch of different sizes here but i specifically put this one on like the pad of my bottom of my foot underneath my toes that's where i get a blister um, and i tend to get the blister more on one foot than the other which is kind of weird maybe i walk a little lopsided not sure uh, so the best thing to do is kind of prepare ahead of time and put that blister aid on before you get that blister definitely before it kind of pops and explodes and uh per our recent trip unfortunately Nina got a blister before the trip my husband decided to take me on a walk throughout the neighborhood what was he thinking right I totally got this nasty blister um the day before I was flying out to Disneyland and my foot was in so much pain luckily a friend loaned me something called KT tape and it's actually special tape that they designed for blisters. They do have a blister kind, I, sh I should say, that I put around that whole area of my foot, which prevented more blisters from happening. And it kind of kept my current blister at bay. And I, I mean, it was bad. My blister was large. It had already popped. I mean, it was bad. I couldn't even walk in the airport. That's how bad it was. So definitely want to take that in consideration. And rather than packing the whole box in your park bag, I take a few out, stick them in a plastic baggie and throw this in my park bag. And then that way, if anything kind of pops up between me and the kiddos, slap on a Band-Aid and you are good to go. But yes, between uh, blister aids and that KT tape, which is also gonna be up on my Amazon link, highly suggest you just prepare for those ahead of time because you just never know, right? Next thing up is a flashlight. And this is just kind of weird because we don't really use them all the time, but we've definitely been into situations where it got dark and we wanted a flashlight. Specifically, this happened to us on Disney Cruise. And sometimes it happens to us at Disney World late at night when we're walking from point A to point B. We may be in a situation where there's not a lot of light. Having our own personal flashlight is handy. And of course, sadly, with the recent hurricane stuff, having a flashlight can indeed be helpful. So this is our travel flashlight right here. It's just a little guy. He has five different modes, right? But what I love about this one is it's USB chargeable. So I don't have to worry about batteries or anything. I can actually just charge this guy in the hotel room as needed. So we kind of just always have a flashlight thrown in the suitcase. You know, like some of this stuff, I don't even really unpack. It's just always in the suitcase. This is always in the suitcase. I just replenish if we used anything or I replenish if, you know, medicine's expired. Otherwise, it just kind of sits in the suitcase. I don't have to worry about packing it or unpacking it. It's kind of always there. Same thing with the flashlight. It's just always in the suitcase. So no matter what kind of situation we get into, it's always with us. Next thing is Ziploc baggies. I've talked about this before, 
for any number of given crazy reasons, I love to have Ziploc baggies. So what I do is actually take them out of the box. Um, I take about, you know, two to four per size. I'm talking gallons, quarts, and sandwich bags, right? And I kind of fold them up nice and flat and I just stick them inside that zippered pocket in the suitcase and they just sit there. I don't even take them out unless I need them, unless there's gonna be a rainstorm or unless, you know, we're, we're packing sandwiches or something like that. I always keep them in the suitcase. I keep uh, one or two of the sandwich size in my uh, park bag because you never know if someone wants to share a Mickey pretzel or if we have leftover food or anything like that, but I pretty much always have Ziploc baggies. And of course, like I said, if we're expecting a storm, then I definitely will pack the larger Ziploc baggies and I actually keep a few trash bags in my suitcase as well in case we need to put, you know, backpacks and whatnot in a larger bag per some form of rainstorm. So yes, yeah, Ziploc bags, all sizes, always with me. Next thing up, this is kind of weird. I pack hand soap. <laughs> here so I don't know if you've noticed in all my room tours is Disney only provides one bar soap here it is right here I actually had an extra took it home one bar soap might be fine for your family it is not for mine we like a bar soap obviously in the sink area right after we use the restroom we wash our hands right washy washy and then we also like one in the shower that's right maybe we're old school my friend thought this was odd of us we still use a bar soap in the shower. So rather than taking the one bar soap from the sink area and then into the shower and then back to the, oh, please. So we use this one in the shower, the one they provide. And then I pack this one to use in the sink area. So it's so much easier on the kids, you know, just pump, pump. And then that way, if I need to wash something like a water bottle or something like that, then I have pump soap that I can use as well. But yeah, maybe Nina's weird. I pack hand soap. So just something to note, The I don't know why the resorts only provide one bar soap. I think they assume everyone's gonna use body wash in the shower. Uh, we're bar soap people. Weird or not, that's what it is for us. So the next thing up is I don't personally pack this, but so many people do, including coworkers, right, and clients, is a storage hanger. That's right, you have all that closet space in your hotel room, and sometimes, sadly, the dresser or drawer space in the hotel room is not very large, especially not for your family of four or even five. A lot of people will pack collapsible, like storage hanger systems in their suitcase, and then they will actually hang them in the hotel closet to store all their clothes, right? So rather than taking up all the dresser drawer space or living out of their suitcase, they will actually hang these like storage systems. Again, I'll post a picture probably. And then they unpack in these hanger systems in the closet. So that way when you go to get your PJs or your clothes for the next day, everything's kind of sorted out in this hanger system. And then when you go to pack up, you just recollapse and put it in your suitcase. So it's just kind of another way to stretch out the space in your hotel room. Because again, unfortunately, not all hotel rooms are created equal. Not only does that include space, but dresser drawer space as well. I have been surprised actually by a few of the Disney hotels having just gotten a makeover, how small those drawers were. And I guess it's something I'm just recently noticing uh, because we're packing more than we ever did before. Uh, my kids are getting older, so they wear bigger clothes and you know they're more picky with what they wear and all that good stuff. That dresser drawer space uh, is apparently becoming very important to my family. So that's something I've just been noticing. So if that's an issue for you, just consider packaging, you know, packing a storage hanger system. You can actually get one for the bathroom as well. I know a lot of the bathrooms, the counter space, space isn't very big. And if everyone in the family has a dop kit or you know, a toiletry bag or something, you know, that can take up a lot of space. So if everyone kind of packs it in a storage hanger that kind of hangs on the shower or the back of the door, that kind of gives you a little bit more space for your blow dryer, your curling iron, and other such things that you may have with you. Hopefully this makes sense, guys. Next thing up, again, another weird one. Wait for it, guys. I pack a fake 
wedding ring. That's right. I very rarely will wear my real legit wedding ring on vacation and I'm not alone. A lot of people do this. No judging wedding rings when on vacation, guys. Um, I think it's just really common, unfortunately, to lose your wedding ring. And sadly, I've actually heard from a lot of cast members, and it's happened to a few clients of mine as well, where ladies actually lost just the diamond. How do you go back and just find the diamond? I mean, maybe you noticed it at lunch, and then at dinner you noticed you didn't have it, but where did you lose it? Was it on Jungle Cruise? Was it on Pirates? Was it on Dumbo? I mean, how do you pinpoint where you lost your diamond? Hopefully... Your wedding ring is insured and all those great things, but at least for me, and I'm assuming most of you guys, my wedding ring is just really irreplaceable. It was hand designed by me, created by a jeweler with a hand-picked vintage diamond from like the 1920s. It's not something that we'll ever be able to replace or get back again. And so when it comes to vacation time, I just err on the side of caution and I just pack a normal ring, here it is right here. This is my most recent fake wedding ring. It doesn't have any fake diamonds or anything on it. It's just rose gold band. It's just easier for me. I don't have to worry about it. If I'm in the shower and I take it off and I put it on the counter and I forgot to put it back on my finger, I don't have to worry about my real wedding ring getting stolen or taken or lost or falling down the drain or getting lost at the theme park. I mean, you think about it. You're going to Florida or some other place, right? And it's hot and your body's changing and you're sweating and you're wearing sunscreen and it's just the last thing I wanna do is lose my uh, real wedding ring. So even though this might sound weird to some, it is actually quite common to not wear your legit wedding ring. In fact, many people I know actually have a travel wedding ring that they wear that, you know, it's a fake diamond, but it looks legit like a wedding ring. Mine doesn't, mine's just a band. Uh, so whatever fits your needs. Also, they have those silicone we rings. I think it was Enzo. I'll pop it up. You can get those as well. I have tried them out. They weren't Nina's cup of tea, uh, but those are actually uh, really good options as well. So you don't have to worry about losing the gold and losing the diamond, but yet you still visually look married. So hopefully <laughs> that isn't too weird for a couple of you. But yeah, the last thing you want to do is trying to search high and low for your wedding ring next thing up and i say this one all the time guys so bear with me but i'm still surprised how many people don't pack this so when, again when we were at disneyland i had a few co-workers who don't pack this we ran into a few people in the theme parks who were struggling and didn't pack this oh my goodness guys everyone <laughs> go out and buy one right now and pack it if you're going on vacation that's a backup battery guys <laughs> So many reasons why you would need a backup battery, right? Most likely your cell phone, but you can also charge Magic Band Plus on these as well. I, I just feel like a lot of people don't realize how much they're actually going to use their phone in the theme park or having that push notifications on in case Disney needs to notify you, how that can drain your battery, constantly searching for Genie Plus or taking selfies, any of those given reasons can help drain your battery. So just be, you know, just get a backup battery pack. You don't have to get as, as obnoxious as mine. Mine lasts for five days, but that's because I'm charging multiple devices. Just get one, guys. Just could not believe how many people didn't have it and they were struggling and they couldn't get Genie Pluses. Like I'm listening to them walking by in line, you know, and, and they're complaining because they can't get their next Genie Plus because their battery's dead. <laughs> And I'm just like, you want to quickly charge? You got your cord? So just plan ahead, guys, and get yourself a backup battery pack. Next thing up, again, this is Nina. <laughs> I pack peanut butter. Quite a bit of it, actually. Um, I take it to the theme parks with me. I got everything from, like, squeezable peanut butter here where you can just squeeze it out of the pack. Uh, you can squeeze it directly into your mouth if you want to, but I like to uh, just have it in my bag. I can squeeze it on crackers or a slice of bread or even a Mickey pretzel as a way to kind of get a quick protein fix because you never know if you woke up too early and you ran out of the room too fast and you never quite got breakfast or lunch or you were in a long line and you've got the hangries. I seem to always have peanut butter on me. And for those of you who are allergic 
to peanut butter. I feel your pain. Believe me, my daughter is allergic to peanuts. I'm allergic to tree nuts. So I have the peanut butter and she has tree nut butter in you know, a similar type squeezable pouch. So just get what works for you. Uh, you can also get little peanut butter like cups and just kind of toss those in your bag. But I just feel like I always have them. And I, <laughs> many people are like, Nina, you got any peanut butter? I need a little, a little something. Oh, yep, I got it right here. I know, it's me, I'm weird. But yes, this is one of my outside of the box things I always pack. Next thing up, um, this is a coworker who does this and this is a really good idea. I have thought about packing this for several trips. I haven't yet, but I might. And that's a toothbrush holder. Now hear me out. When you're in a hotel and you've got a family of four or five and everyone's toothbrushes are just kind of laying on the counter. What are the odds of someone knocking that off onto the floor? It's happened to me. <laughs> or it falls in the sink. Or just other things that are kind of gross right now. So um, I love the idea of having a toothbrush holder. That way everyone's toothbrushes are nice in the holder. You can actually get a kind that kind of like suction cups to the mirror. And that way everyone's toothbrush is in place. It's sanitized, it's clean, right? And then it frees up more space on the counter. These are especially helpful on the cruises because the cruises, um, their counter space is just way too small. So yeah, a toothbrush holder. Let me know in the comments, who else packs a toothbrush holder? Raise your hand, put it in the comments. And if you don't, who thinks this is crazy? Because I, I want to hear about that too. Uh, like I said, Nina hasn't packed it yet, but I'm thinking about it because I feel like there's a good reason to have a toothbrush holder uh, when traveling, especially for those longer trips and trips with kiddos who can't seem to just stop knocking things on the floor. My kids are always dropping things. It's annoying as all heck. Maybe having a toothbrush holder will just keep everything nice and sanitized. So just a thought for you guys. Uh, next thing up is me. This is a weird one. I always pack, wait for it, Crocs. <laughs> Here they are right here. I have several pairs actually. These are my current Halloween pairs right here. Got them one or two seasons ago at the theme parks. Why does Nina pack Crocs? Well, I'll tell you guys. How many times at the end of the day are you like, oh, my feet are so sore. As soon as I take my shoes off, I am not going anywhere. I'm just crawling into this bed and I'm not going anywhere because my feet are so sore. I don't think I'm gonna get them back in the shoes. Anyone else think this way? Oh my goodness, you need Crocs. So you wear your normal shoes throughout the theme park and then when you come back and you're taking a break, put on your Crocs and then your feet are gonna feel so nice and happy and then you can still wear these to the pool or to you know the lobby or go get some quick eats at your local restaurant, wherever you wanna go, but your feet are still happy. So yeah, I pack Crocs. I will even wear them on the airplane if I need my feet to feel a little comfy. Uh, Crocs are also great in case you do have a swelling in your legs or your feet. Therefore, when you take off your shoes, you can't get them back on even if you wanted to because your feet have kind of gotten a little swollen. Just consider packing something like Crocs as a way to kind of keep your feet um, nice and happy. Let me know in the comments as well. Is that weird or you do the same? I don't know. Next thing up, and uh, this is me again. I always pack these, and that is compression socks. So if you're of age and you're starting to get, um, you know, a little bit of a swelling in your legs or your ankles or your feet, you know, when you're walking all day long or you're in the heat or on the airplane and your feet kind of puff out a little bit, consider compression socks because it will save you from having the issues later. It might save you from needing the Crocs later is to pack a compression socks. So mine are full leg, not full leg, they're up to the knee compression socks. Here are mine right here. I always wear them on the airplane underneath my pants. You never see them. Um, and then in the theme parks, I'm usually okay, although sometimes I do have to sleep in them. It just depends on how, much, how hot I got and how much walking I did and what I ate that day and all that good stuff. But you can also get compression socks that just look like socks. So no one has to know that you're wearing compression like anklets and saving your poor feet. So just, again, thinking outside of the box here, Consider compression socks, whether they are up to the knee like mine or just up to the ankle and they just look like cute little socks and no one even needs to know you're wearing them. But just something to consider if you do have some water 
uh, issues, some bloating, or just some foot pain, consider some compression there. Next thing up, and this is for my MacGyver-like people, and I know you guys think I'm funny because I've actually talked about a few of these items in my grocery videos where I talk about ordering groceries from Disney, and then I show you the kit that I pack for every trip, and it has some stuff in it per the groceries, right? Yeah, uh, Nina always packs a knife. Not to the theme parks, guys, not to the theme parks, for my hotel room, because I feel like I'm always cutting someone's sandwich. Someone has always ordered something that needs me to cut it in half or trim it or spread peanut butter on it. Always needing a knife, I don't know why. Scissors, I always pack scissors. You can pack kitty scissors. I just kind of have a spare pair of scissors that I throw in a box, again, that's in that video. Uh, I'm always opening up cereal boxes or something else that we ordered from Amazon or a grocery delivery service and I'm cutting things open. I always have scissors. Of course, the husband always has his Swiss Army knife as well because again, MacGyver, right? Um, again, don't take those to the theme parks, but that's kind of where I'm going with that is to have a nice uh, a knife and a pair of scissors and then also a coworker, and this is new to me, she packs a little bit of duct tape. Why? Because how many times are you on vacation and your magic band broke or fell off or your glasses broke or something ripped and you need a quick repair? She absolutely uh, packs duct tape. I kind of love that. So again, if you're interested in the MacGyver things and you're always there to be prepared, consider something like a knife, a pair of scissors and duct tape. Of course, Nina always packs masking tape, which is not as good as duct tape but we're getting up there. So I do always have tape, and if you've seen my other videos, it's because I I pack clothes, the, um, you know, like shampoo and conditioner bottles so they don't leak. I always pack the lids shut with tape. Next thing up, again, Nina, super weird. I pack paper towels. <laughs> this is also in my grocery video. Um, just, we're at Disney World for like 10 days to two weeks. The kids are always eating in the room or spreading peanut butter on something. And I just feel like we're always getting dirty. And you only get a limited amount of towels or washcloths. And of course they don't change them every day like they used to. So I just pack paper towels. Now I don't need to pack the giant Costco size paper towels. Sometimes I'll just go and get the dollar paper towels, you know, that's the thinner roll. Uh, but that way I don't have to worry about taking the napkins from the quick service or always having them in the room. I just have a roll of paper towels and let me tell you, we use them every single trip. Every single trip, my husband makes fun of me. Why are you packing paper towels? This is such a useless, you know, hog of space. And yet every single trip we use the paper towels. So again, thinking outside of the box here, Nina does indeed pack paper towels. The last thing on the list is, well, we just need to talk about it, right? A little bit of the elephant in the room, and that is hurricanes. So unfortunately, a hurricane has recently uh, hit Florida pretty, pretty bad. I'm sending out my love and pixie dust and prayers to all of you that have been affected uh, per that hurricane. But I get a lot of people who just ask about hurricanes at Disney World in general. And I have had clients, you know, that are there now. I've had clients that were there during Irma. And the same kind of stuff just keeps happening. So for those of you who are worried about Disney World, Universal, whatever, during hurricane season, this is just a few things to know, okay? So hurricane season is indeed about half of the year. It's like from June or July through November. So there's really no good way to avoid a hurricane unless you're just gonna avoid Florida completely. I mean, it's half of the year is hurricane season. But if you are worried about it and if you think a hurricane is coming or a storm is coming or you just wanna be ultra prepared, just know these few things. Obviously for Florida, anytime you want ponchos, you want rain ponchos because you just never know when a rainstorm is gonna hit. If you think uh, a hurricane or you're really worried about a hurricane, go ahead and pack those rain shoes as well. I'm pretty sure the people that are there at Disney World right now wish they had rain boots because walking from their room to the lobby probably was a few inches or more of water. So the other thing that I, I think people need to realize is if you're worried about a storm or a hurricane or a tornado or any possible congunct, you know, possibility of weather that's going to keep you in your hotel room, you want to think of a few things. Uh, first thing I think about is entertainment for the room. 
Not everyone wants to sit there and watch TV, and sometimes the power goes out. So having some puzzles or games or something to do with the kiddos in case this happens is key. Uh, this is my uh, entertainment kit. This is actually from Disney Cruise Line. It's wrapped up at the moment, um, but it's basically kind of a soft case. It's very thin. It's always in my suitcase, and it's, it's actually checkers, chess, hangman and batgammon all in one so that way between the tv and the, this kit and maybe i'll bring a deck of cards we pretty much always have something to do to entertain ourselves should we accidentally have booked a vacation during a hurricane or a tornado or a huge storm just something to kind of think about we always have shelf stable snacks. Again, what if power goes out? You wanna have snacks that aren't gonna go bad. And you wanna have enough snacks to kind of last you a couple of days, especially with um, the hurricane right now. Um, even though the resorts are open and people are currently able to go back and forth, what if that wasn't the case? So you just wanna be ultra prepared and have those snacks in your room. Same thing with water lots of bottles of water and if you you know you suspect a hurricane is coming and you're staying on property you want to get as men, as much food as you possibly can and get it in your refrigerator because the lines uh to eat at quick service if quick service is indeed open is going to be forever and a year long so you want to prepare ahead of time and have the water and the snacks and all the pre-made sandwiches and things that you can get already in your room so that when something like this happens, you're already prepared. Hopefully this makes sense. And for those of you who are wondering, um, my friends over in Orlando right now, my um, clients that are there right now, um, they felt that Disney did take care of them. So just know that in advance between generators and the power never going out and the characters and the pre-made sandwiches that they do have to sell, they're making the most of it. Let's just put it that way. And for like anyone else in Florida who sadly is in the thick of it, I'm sending out my love to you. I really am. Good luck, guys. I, I feel for you. Florida really got attacked with this one. But as always, guys, uh, my video has gotten a little too long. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, this is beyond your, your shirts and your undies and your socks. This is kind of like the think outside of the box, the additional kind of weird things that you might want to consider packing for your next vacation. Again, not all these things are going to be perfect for everyone, but if hopefully a few of these things kind of set off a light bulb for you. And you're gonna hopefully pack these things um, for your next adventure. So yeah, as always guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful or helpful, or at least, you know, kind of got you thinking of a few things you might need for your next vacation. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. If the subscribe button is red, please click it, turn it gray, hit the bell icon for notifications, like this video, and again, comment. Who else packs soap? What other weird thing did I say that you're like, oh, Nina, I actually already packed that? Or how many things did I say and you're like, what is this crazy nutcase talking about? Why would I want to pack that? Let me know in the comments, guys. Again, I have been traveling for years. I mean, it's what I do for a living. I am a travel agent. I do go everywhere. So after all of my <laughs> weird trips, I have kind of got packing down to a science for me. But that doesn't mean everything is perfect for you. But let me know in the comments, um, as always, guys. And yeah, as always, mahalo for watching. Nina, out. Bye, guys. Oh.